What's going on guys? It's Anthony from GM85. It is Sunday. We're getting into the carbonara aspect of today. Now this video is a little special. This is me and Stephen W. Doolittle spoke about many a time. He's always wanted to see my rendition of this. He is no longer with us. So this is kind of a dedication for him. Now to make this classic dish that people kind of mess up. It's really only four ingredients. It's black pepper, guanciale, pecorino romano, eggs, and spaghetti, which is five. Secret ingredient six would be pasta water, which is starts to make the cream. But I'm going to do a couple of twists here, so hopefully I don't offend any of the Italians here. But I'm doing it in a different manner, so we're going to turn this around. I have, guys, black pepper, I ground in a mortar and pestle, also toasted. Uh, I live in America, so we don't have guanciale readily available. But what we do have is pancetta that is sold in the cube form like this quite regularly and then a bunch of fresh ground pecorino romano to get it that fine use that setting on your throwaway box grater a couple of eggs i use the entire egg i don't separate egg yolks and all that it's a waste of my time good quality spaghetti which this is a good one here i'll be using more than that and my first twist i'm going to be doing guys is i'm not going to use the pancetta i'm actually going to use this this is pork jowl bacon it has a skin on it and everything it's the exact same cut of meat they use to make guan charlie out of actually so i'm going to be using this first so these are the ingredients and then we're gonna break into this real quick and get into this and i'll cut this down and then we'll start assembling this in a little bit guys and then the camera will be focused on the pot and the pans and you guys will basically be pov chefs at this point guys this is the intro for carbonara that gm85 has all right guys and the gm85 this is the carbonara video we are continuing with so this is the pork jaw bacon i'm using in place of the pancetta here and everything's being sped up because this took a little longer for me to do for some reason guys so we're speeding this up so mm -hmm. that's what you really want you want that fat on top meat in the middle fat on the bottom on this pork jaw bacon is a little complicated to work with sometimes you get a lot of fat sometimes you get nice good cuts so what you're seeing me do here is really just go through it, break it down, get what I'm looking for here. So at some point you will notice I do have um, mostly just straight fat pieces. Those pieces are kind of okay at some point and sometimes they're not. But uh, you'll notice when I get to a certain piece here, like that's right there is good. Got fat, meat, fat. Then what I'm cutting now I believe is almost all strictly just fat 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 and fat um, unlike the guan charlie this i believe does not have any skin on it because it's fully cured and smoked that does give the cup an incredibly different flavor it is nowhere near when you can do it with pancetta or guan charlie guys so that's all fat so we're taking that to the side you'll see me push some stuff around and i'm just not finding what i'm really want right there so those pieces you're starting to see that's what i've been looking for that's what i want so that's what you should be looking for as well. If you get a really good piece of going trale, that's what you should be looking for. Things like that. Now this is bacon. It is not guanciale, but it's the same part of the animal, which is really nice to have. Um, it's a good option, unless you feel like going to one of the two specialty shops that may or may not have this, or if you buy online. So this is just the meat prep here, guys. So we're just going to go through this real quick. Then in the back there, you see I got three eggs, and then there's a pint glass with 300 something grams of spaghetti. And then you have a half a shot glass full of salt for my pasta water here, guys. Which, when I say big pot, I mean big pot. I'm using a 12 quart pot, and you'll see a little photo pop up around here. When I say I'm using a big pot, I'm using a 12 quart pot with three and a half quarts of water for the pasta. And then in the mortar and pestle on the back is fresh ground black pepper, which I'll put a little image up. What I do is I toast it in a dry pan, then I put it in the mortar and pestle, and I grind it up. And under that little plate is a bowl full of pecorino romano, guys. These are your ingredients for carbonara. No cream, no carrots, no peas, none of that stuff that you've seen, guys. This is just a variation on it. Um, the only thing I don't have in front here is garlic. It's actually in the fridge. I forgot to take it out. So my other twist is I'm using garlic because this is a smoked bacon product and I want a little garlic flavor in it this time. Garlic is non-traditional as is the Calabrian chili peppers I do add towards the end. Here are some of my bad egg cracking techniques. 
but the only technique I'm going to correct is cracking on a flat surface guys it's better than doing it on the edge of a bowl you have run less of a chance of getting shell in there even though I did a little mini fork I use here a little tri fork like Aquaman here so beat this together real good and so I got that whipped up and then I'm going to add only black pepper to that what I'm doing right here is I'm washing my hands so I don't touch the raw pepper with contaminated hands guys very important if you work in a professional kitchen there's my pepper now we're going to go in with some of this pecorino romano here not all of it at first almost all of it though and we're going to whip it together And I'm getting there. I'm going to add a little more in a minute. And during all this time right here, guys, there's a big 12-quart pot of water getting ready to boil right behind me. So you'll see that image a couple of times, possibly. Very important. Use a pot. Don't use a saute pan. I've seen people do it, say it works. I'm not that person. I'm not that fan. Give me a pot, especially a 12 quart pot. You just drop your spaghetti or your long pasta straight in, and you have enough movement, enough water, and everything. So, one of the few times you also use less salt in it right here. Very specific though, guys. Cold saute pan if you're using just uh, pork gel bacon or the pancetta. Or even if you have guanciale, start with a cold pan. Slowly render the fat out. Now my stove is very finicky, so I have to play around with my heat controls a lot because it's just the way the stove is. Makes the cooking more of a chore than anything, especially on the front burner. So here's one minute of footage roughly. And we're gonna go from that to building the carbonara. So right there's where you wanna get it. I didn't stress it very much. It does get a little darker as it cooks. I did throw my garlic cloves in for a little garlicky flavor. I will pull those out later also. I just like garlic. Garlic does not go in everything that is made in Italian cuisine, just so you guys know. Throwing a little bit of black pepper in just for good measure. And I'm just going to stir this. And then off to the side on the other side is that 12-quart pot full of spaghetti. That only takes 8 minutes. Package time says... 10 minutes, cook time is actually eight minutes. You're gonna take it out two minutes before and you're gonna dump it all in there. If you get pasta water in there, no big deal. You need the pasta water anyway. So you see what I'm doing is I'm going back and forth, stirring the stirring the pork chow bacon and stirring the pasta back and forth. It's all going on the same dish, so it doesn't really matter. But I'll tell you this did work relatively well, guys. I probably should have used a carbon steel pan because I didn't like the way this stainless steel pan did for me. I felt it got a little too sticky for me. But that's also partially the stove as well. It's hard to work with some days. Alright, you see we got all of our fat rendered out real good. I believe we should be pulling the spaghetti. There we go, right there. That's the proper way to cook your pasta, guys. Right from the pot into the pan, guys. Trust me. Don't be mixing stuff together. You do it all together. Just like this. So, I cooked it for eight minutes. That means we got two minutes in this pan to cook still, guys. So, I actually pulled it a little, a little earlier, like with about 40 seconds left, guys. So, you're going to see me stir this around with the tongs. You're going to see me try to do the fancy uh, tossing technique. There's the pasta water. Very important. That's your starch. That's what makes your cream. Very important. That makes the cream. So we're going to stir, 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 stir. You got to work really quick now. Pull my garlic out. And it's still cooking. See all that pasta water in there? It's mixing with that, that smoke flavor and that, that uh, black pepper. We gotta get that water evaporated a little so the pasta still needs to cook a little bit longer. And then we're going to toss. I think I'd, I'm gonna do the, the toss method with a, 
believe the proper term is Montecatore in Italian. <coughs> Working on learning my Italian dialect. Oh, there he goes, Montecatore. So you're tossing, you're mixing at the same time. Now what's going to happen here is the most important thing for anyone that wants to learn to make carbonara. So you saw me pull my pan up. You're going to see me do it again. Obviously I didn't toss very well. I'm being a little sloppy today. Clean that up real quick so I don't burn my house down. There's one crucial step that some people don't mention. And that is where I'm at right now right here turn the heat off or if you're very new at it or scared to cook with the raw egg mixture leave the heat on the lowest setting possible on your burner but I'm comfortable enough to where I leave the heat off and here I go that's my cream mixture that's just black pepper eggs and pecorino romano I'm going to just mix and mix and mix there's enough residual heat in that pan to cook the mixture and I'm not going to get scrambled eggs at all. I'm also doing this incredibly quickly too. The speed, the video is sped up though, but I did work with this in a fast manner. So you can tell it's all just mixing in and you'll be able to tell once I do the toss method again, you'll be able to see the creaminess of it. Now this is not a perfect carbonara by any means, but it is a decent one. It is made correctly. There's no peas in it. There's no cream in it. So I do believe I did correct on most of this in my opinion, guys. I'm just using a different kind of meat. I also know the proper steps involved to make this dish where everyone does different things here. So you're gonna see me add some black pepper. Here's my little other twist for my personal self. I love spice and that is my Calabrian chili flakes that I love to death that I would need to actually buy more because I'm running through them quite quickly. More Pecorino Romano. Then coming up, I'm going to toss it one more time. You can see the, the creamy sauce. That's pretty close to what you really want. That's your sauce. That's your cream. You're not getting scrambled eggs. You're not getting nothing. Nice creamy sauce. I'll eat this straight out of the pan. I already have been also, guys, as I'm recording over this right now for you guys. And here's my little half-assed plate for you. Really wasn't completely ready to do this, but this is mechanics cooking 101, basically, guys.